Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to another YouTube video on the channel. And today, guys, we are going to be continuing our three game match reviews. Now, in today's video, we are going to be going over the two Sunday games and the other Saturday night game that we did not include in the other match reviews. So, in today's match reviews, we're going to be going over Richmond, uh, not Richmond, so that's a brain fade, Brisbane versus West Coast, Melbourne versus St Kilda and Carlton versus Adelaide. Now, some big games. We actually learned some big things from these games. Um, so, let's not waste any time. Let's just go ahead and get right into today's three-game match review. And, well, match reviews. The first game that we'll be starting off with is Brisbane versus West Coast at the Gabba on a Saturday night. So, for the West Coast Eagles, a disastrous season just continues to get worse for them. They get beaten very convincingly. Brisbane, 16,905, defeat West Coast, 4,630. So, again, especially West Coast and North Melbourne, just haven't been able to hit the scoreboard at all. And uh, 30 is no great score. Of course, we saw this round, the Giants got 35, North Melbourne managed 24. So, so, there hasn't been some great scores this round, and 30, again, isn't great. Now, Brisbane, they definitely did have the capability of winning this game by more than 75, but it was a little bit sloppy and wet conditions up at the Gabba, so that is why. Uh, but again, Brisbane, it was just an absolute masterclass. The worm just went up and up and up. In fact, at quarter time, though, it was only 3-3, to 6. So West Coast did have their chances if they had to hit the scoreboard a little bit more, but Brisbane, they were just attacking the entire game, and they were just the better side by... By far, it was um, still only 36-7 at half time, but you pretty much knew there. West Coast scored 7 at half time, and you can just you can't really back them in. Um, third quarter, Brisbane got rolling, but it was just the final quarter where they really extended their lead out to something that was going to be hard to beat, um, well, which was impossible to beat for West Coast. 29, I suppose, for Lockie Neal and Jack Redden. Four goals for Charlie Cameron and Hugh McCluggage. They, ha they both had themselves absolute day outs, um, or if you want to say night outs. Um, yeah, 141 fantasy for McCluggage, 132 for Zorko, 120 fantasy for Redden, 115 for Hearn, 113 for Neal, 107 for Rich, 99 for Answorth, 97 for Bailey and Waterman and Jones. Now, goals, yeah, again, four for Cameron and McCluggage. Three goals for Ryan, so uh, the West Coast Eagles multiple goal scorer and two goals for Rayner. So, yeah, that was the avenue. Three goals for Ryan, and then the only other goal went to Jack Darling. Uh, 29, I suppose, for Neil and Redden, as I said. 28 for Rich, uh, 27 for Hearn, 26 for McCluggage, and Zorko getting in there. And then now I've got Marks, 11 for Waterman, 10 for Zorko, uh, and eight for Rich and Hearn and Rotham and Duggan. Tackles, 10 for McCluggage, again, getting in there. Eight for Zorko and Answorth. Answorth did, um, did have himself a pretty good game. 31 uh, hitouts for four, 27 for McInerney, 13 for Jamie And you could just tell by the name, he didn't really stand much of a chance against the big Owen Darcy Fort. Um, so, yeah, not great for the Eagles. Team stats again. Um, disposals weren't necessarily dominated, but inside 50s were. Brisbane more than doubled West Coast inside 50 count, 68 to 33. Um, hit outs massively in favour of uh, Brisbane as well. And then um, not really anything else that appealing. But yeah, again, marked inside 50, 15 to 6. Again, more set shots uh, with a chance. Brisbane led the entirety of the game. Their biggest lead was the final margin of 75 points. Um... But yeah, it was just it was just such a good game for Brisbane. And look, they are really establishing themselves one of the great teams in the competition. They've just got a great list. And for West Coast, their season's not going so well. So we went from one smashing Brisbane versus West Coast to another smashing Melbourne. This time getting the job done over St Kilda 14 993 to 8 7 55. Now, Melbourne, they are gonna have to get upset eventually, but you just don't know when's the team. They've got North Melbourne and West well, they've got West Coast and North Melbourne to come, and those two teams aren't going to upset. So when will North, when will Melbourne actually lose their first game? It's going to be interesting to see because they're on a pretty good run right now, and they do it again this time. They show they can actually really uh, demonstrate a good lead and smash a team. Obviously, just getting the, the narrow win over Hawthorne by 10 last week, but they get the win by 38 this week in a game where they were dominant. It was 50 to 9 at one stage and then 57 to 15 at, at another stage. Um, first quarter was just absolute dominance. They kept the Saints really down 26 to 3. Second quarter, they had a little bit of a staircase up, um, which really took them to that 50 to 9 stage, 57 to 15 stage as well. And then 
the Saints, they drew it back in a little bit. They had a little bit of dominance through this part here. But again, the Demons, they just managed to hold their nerve in the last quarter and get over pretty comfortably by 38 points. The Saints, they were never in this game, though. It was always around a 30-point margin, and they just had no chance. And a score of 55, again, not, not the greatest or highest of scores. 39 disposals for Ed Langdon. Three goals for Kaziah Pickett and Ben Brown. Um, 140 fantasy for Langdon. Nine tackles for Brad Crouch, but... Yeah, for the Saints, it wasn't great. And their run has been stopped. They were winning. They won five in a row. Uh, losses to Port Adelaide and Melbourne. Yes, they may be sides to the better end of the competition. But, yeah, they do need to try and fix something up here, the Saints. They've just, they have just need to try and find a win from somewhere. So they've got the Cats next week. It's not going to get any easier for them. So really got to try and strap themselves in and, and get a win coming very soon. Now... Ed Lang did 140 fantasy. He was amazing. 123 for Brayshaw, 119 for Oliver, 118 for Petrarch. You can see the best on grounds are Melbourne. 115 for Crouch, 100 for Harms. And the 98 for Steele and Sinclair. Goals by Hines. Three for Pickett and Brown. Two for McDonald and King and Harms. And Marshall uh, combines with the two as well. Um, well, he gets the two, sorry. Trips in with the two. Um, and then... Disposals, 39 for Langdon, 38 for Oliver, 36 for Petrarca, 31 for Brayshaw. Those were the only players that got above 30 on the ground. All of the Melbourne players, so getting way more of the footy. 29 disposals for Steele, though, and 27 for Crouch, 26 for Sinclair and Ross. So the next lot being St Kilda. But again, not massive numbers compared to the 30s. 13 marks for Brayshaw, 12 for Wilkie, 10 for Howard, 9 for Wood, Battle, Sinclair, Membry, 8 for Langdon and Patton. Those are some big numbers. Like 13, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7. Some big numbers there. Well, sorry, don't include the 7, but yeah, 7 for Harms and still if you wanted to know. Um, 9 tackles for Crouch, 7 for Sparrow and Harms. Yeah, there's some big numbers recorded in this game. Hideous, 19 for Ryder, 16 for Gorn, 12 for Marshall, 7 for Jackson, 2 for McDonald. So, yeah, let's go to have a look at some team stats. Melbourne went inside 50, 11 more times than the Saints. It's not like it's a massive, um, massive number, but it can still, those 11 could definitely be very costly still. Um, Hideous was actually in favour of the Saints more than the Demons. Is there anything else that's looking really appealing? Not really. Not really. The Saints actually took more marks than the Demons, believe it or not. 112, um, minutes, 112 and a half minutes was how much. Demons led for which was uh, the entire game. Their biggest lead was 47. Um, and nothing else interesting. So that is that game. But look, the Demons, they just they just uh, put the foot on the accelerator and get a big win. Now for the second week in a row, we've got a 410 slash 440 game. So of course, the Listen Live thing is still there. I'm quick on to doing it after this. Uh, even though it is going out the next day. But I am quick on to doing um, this, so, yeah, quick on to, quick on to getting these done, so Carlton, 17, 14, 116, defeat Adelaide, 10, 8, 68, this, re this match reviews is the reviews of the smashings, all right, um, I didn't expect them all to be massive smashings, but there you have it, that's, that's the end of this match reviews, pretty much, uh, we'll go through Carlton versus Adelaide, however, but yeah, it was a, it was a big win for Carlton, and uh, they did against North Melbourne by 50 points. They beat Adelaide by 48. Is Adelaide another percentage booster team? Because you do have West Coast North Melbourne in the mix. Does Adelaide come into that? I wouldn't make him a percentage booster after these two games. But look, next week they've got a big test versus Brisbane. Uh, and Adelaide have to show up more than what they did today. They were they were hopeless, really. Uh, they kicked the first two goals of the game. And at quarter time, it was close being 21-14. to uh, Half time... They were still in it. It was 60 to 34, but it was getting out of hand. Their third quarter, game over. That just shut the door on them. The Carlton, Carlton they just got a good run of things in the third quarter. Adelaide uh, goalless, kicked the two behinds, did the Adelaide Crows. Carlton got a good run on them. They took the chance, and it was 102 to 36. And last quarter, not great for the Blues. Adelaide actually managed to go from 36 to 68. So they managed to get a bit of a score at turnaround compared to the Blues. Only getting 14 more points, two goals, two. Um, 
but again, not a great finish for the Adelaide Crow. Well, not a great finish for Carlton. So again, it was almost like a three-quarter kind of game. Um, and if it was a bit closer, the Crows could have maybe nearly taken it away from him. Uh, Paddy Cripps, though, 135 disposals, six goals for Charlie Kerner. He was fantastic. Mackay also got the Crows a fair bit, 138 fantasy for Kerner. Nine tackles for Sanbury. But the Blues, they are like, they sit fourth now. Uh, they're sitting pretty. They're sitting well. They still do have the least amount of percentage um, than any other team in the top eight. But. They've they've done it against North Melbourne. They've done it against um, they've done it against Adelaide. Got the Giants next week, so they could almost make it another percentage boost if they really wanted to. But yeah, this was a good game for the Blues. They really they're really showing that their class. Really, that's uh, an important thing. 138 fantasy for Kerno, 130 for Cripps, 128 for Dawson. He was good. 122 for Laird, 116 for Doherty, 106 for Chera, 103 for Berry, 101 for Fisher, and the 98 for Walsh and Keys. Uh, now, yeah, the goals six for Kerno, three for Mackay. Those were the top goal scorers. Two for Fisher, McAdam, Walker, Silvani, and Cripps. And then one goal for lots of different players um, getting involved. Now, I suppose 35 for Cripps, 33 for Laird, 30 for Doherty. Dawson gets 30 as well. 29 for Keys, 27 for Cherry, 26 for Walsh, 23 for Kennedy and Fisher. And then 22 for Schoenberg as one as well. 21 touches for Kerno is the four. That is very good. He's, he was getting in there, getting those touches. Marks, 10 for Kerno, 10 for Doherty, 10 for Young, 10 for Dawson. Big numbers there. And then 9 for Newman as well. 8 for Fisher and Hinge. Now into the tackles, 9 for Berry, 7 for Chera, Cripps and Laird, 6 for Keys, Haightley and Schonberg. Now to the hit out, 38 for O'Brien. He had a he had a day, but... 17 for De Koning, 6 for Himmelberg, 3 for Wiedering, 2 for Walker, 1 for Mackay, 1 for Cripps. Um, so, interesting there. Now, going into the team stats again. Carlton went inside 50, way more than Adelaide. 74 to 49, so that is a big stat there. Um, but, yeah, not not great for the Adelaide Crows. But for Carlton, it's a big win, and it's a really confident win as well. Um, it was a convincing, confident, and comfortable win and, um, yeah, I feel like after this, they, they got a good win versus North Melbourne. But this game, they, they bought it for the whole game. Yes, they may not have done it in the last quarter, but they still ended up doing it for enough to end up winning the game. Uh, their biggest margin was 68, so it could have been more monstrous than what it ended up being if Carlton had played a semi-OK last quarter. So, Carlton, if they had played the last quarter in this game, they could have won bigger they could have pushed it out definitely towards 80, which would have been a monstrous win. It's a monstrous win still, though, for Carlton, and they are right on the road to glory for this year. They are looking good. They are in some good touch. They've got a good list, and they're just going so well right now. They're hard to stop. So round eight concludes here. Port Adelaide defeat the Dogs 86-69. to Freo smash the Roos 102 to 24. The Tigers they get a nice win over the Pies 113 to 86. Um, the Swans they get defeated by Gold Coast somehow. The SCG 61 to 75. The Suns getting the job done there. Um, GWS do not do well after their big win over Adelaide going down 35 to 88. And the Cats Jeremy Cameron hitting up really well. Um, Essendon beating Hawthorne. They come from behind, win 108 to 81. Brisbane smashing West Coast 105 to 30, of course, in today's match reviews. Uh, also in today's match reviews were Melbourne versus St Kilda and Adelaide versus Carlton. Melbourne, 93, get over the Saints, 55 in a pretty convincing, comfortable, confident win. And Carlton versus Adelaide. Carlton get the job done very convincingly by 48 points and they, they get another nice, comfortable, confident um, win as well. Um, and convincing. Now, into round nine. Collingwood versus Bulldogs on the Friday night. A good opener, actually. Winner will really be pressing on the top eight. Ninth, ninth versus tenth at Marvel. Hawthorne versus Richmond. Hawthorne, they need to bounce back. They they could do it against the Tigers, but the Tigers, they've been winning big recently over the Eagles and the Pies. North Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. Will North Melbourne be able to put something up to the table, or will Port Adelaide continue their dominant form and go and win four in a row? St Kilda vs Geelong, can, can St Kilda get their season back on track or will the Cats continue to shine? Sydney vs Essendon, will Sydney cop another upset at the SCG? 
or will they be too good and how about Essen and what will they be able to do? Adelaide versus Brisbane. Will Adelaide cop another smashing in three weeks? We'll have to wait and find out. Gold Coast versus Frio. Will Frio continue their stellar form? GWS versus Carlton. Can Carlton get another big win to make three big wins on the trot? And West Coast versus Melbourne. How big can Melbourne get another win? So that is what round nine has ahead for us. Melbourne are eight and zero. Oh. If we just have a little look at Melbourne real quick, let's just do this real quick. So nine in round nine, right? They've got West Coast. In round ten, right? They've got North Melbourne. Go to round eleven. They got Frio. Good blockbuster clash coming up against Frio in round 11. Could that be when they actually finally cop their first defeat of the year? We'll have to wait and see. But again, Frio, they sit pretty in second. Along with Brisbane, not too far behind. Now, look at this. It's two games the gap between Brisbane and Geelong, who sit in fourth on 20 points, uh, accompanied by Sydney, St Kilda and Carlton. Now, obviously, this is not the live ladder. So actually, no, it's not. So we've got to put the live ladder on. Carlton sit in fourth with 24 points. Um, so they are just a game behind Brisbane and Fremantle. Geelong, Sydney, St Kilda all sit on 20 points, um, 5, 6 and 7. Richmond, Collingwood are on 16, 8 and 9. Um, then you've got Western Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, Hawthorne, Gold Coast and Adelaide all on 12 points, 8 points. It's GWS, GWS and Essendon, North Melbourne and West Coast. The only teams on 4 points. Every team is off and away, but Melbourne, when will they be able to cop their first defeat? It'll be interesting to see. They are 8 no and have another great start to the year. So that is going to wrap up today's match reviews. It is probably the longest match reviews of the year. But anyway, thank you guys all so much for watching. What a round we had of footy. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So then you guys will never miss another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. So bye everyone. Flaming footy out.